Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2016. Brought to you by Informatica. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live at Informatica World 2016. Exclusive coverage with SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, CEO of SiliconANGLE, co-CEO of SiliconANGLE with Peter Burris, head of research at SiliconANGLE Media and general manager of Wikibon Research. Our next guest is Bruce Chisholm, who's a board member of Informatica. He's on the board of Oracle. I mean, so many boards you're on, I don't even, can't even say them all. Uh, you're also on the board of Elemental Technologies, which we interviewed at Amazon. Great team, acquired by Amazon uh, and during reInvent. Welcome to theCUBE, welcome to being a CUBE alumni. It's great to be here. Great to have uh, a luminary like yourself on. You've, you've been in the industry for, uh, God, since the computer industry. Luminary. You, you know, I'm just an old retired <laughs> guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you've, no, but you're, you're active on your Oracle board. So I got to ask you the first question, because um, when I interviewed Mark Hurd, clearly their cloud, end to end, and you heard Larry, Larry Elson hasn't not yet been on theCUBE, we'll get him on. But when Mark was on theCUBE, he said, look it, we're end to end cloud. Informatica is all cloud. They can be cloud on-prem, so you're on boards with both those companies. What does Informatica have to do to survive? Because you, could, you can argue that Oracle's kind of going down that road. Is there an intersection? Can Informatica stand on their own? What's your take on that? Yeah, so uh, Oracle's going to, is successful. They're a nice <laughs> little $40 billion company <laughs> generating $15 billion or so free cash flow. They're going to do just fine. And Larry is certainly driving the transition to the cloud. The advantage that Informatica has as it relates to data management, is that they are truly Swiss in their approach. The company is able to go to their customers and say, look, we'll take data from anywhere and help you manage it in a way that you can really use it for your business. So, if someone's using the Oracle stack, yeah, they'll take advantage of Oracle's DI capabilities. If somebody's using SAP Oracle stack. Oracle works great. That's correct. But if somebody truly is working in a, in a diverse environment, a diverse ecosystem, with data coming from all kinds of places, they will feel more comfortable with somebody who doesn't control the stack. Is there another Switzerland out there? Is there another independent entity out there that you, competition-wise, I just don't, I mean, I don't see it. Not I mean, of scale. There's a whole bunch of smaller players that I would consider ankle biters, and then you have the <laughs> stack guys. Um, which is one of the reasons when I was working with Primera and looking at Informatica that I got excited about the opportunity. This is a billion dollar company. Well, they went private, so the opportunity to make money, more money on an IPO certainly is on the horizon. I interviewed Anil uh, at Amazon reInvent 2014 on theCUBE, and he was the lowly chief product officer, but now he's the <laughs> CEO. Um, what a great team, but he laid out two years ago, this is not like they're groping for a strategy. They've been on this now. You can see the movement to go private. Yeah, Does biggest, that take the pressure off the being a board member, being private? No, or? no, no, no. So first of all, the, the big, the great news about the company is, in a lot of ways, it reminds me of Adobe. I, I spent uh, 14 years of my life at Adobe, seven as CEO. When I took over as CEO, the company was struggling. Uh, the company was about 800 million in revenue, had a whole bunch of money in the bank, no debt. The EV was around 1.7 billion. The street had written the thing off. Had it been today, activists would have come in and, and forced something to happen. Fortunately, uh, that didn't exist back then. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, what they had was great products, great technology, loyal customers, passionate customers, and a macro environment that was in their favor. I looked at Informatica, I'm going, wow, this is just like Adobe. <laughs> this is a billion dollar company with incredible products. You look at Gartner, where they're positioned, you look at Forrester Wave, where they're positioned. This is an awesome product company. Customers love them. They lo you know, we interviewed customers, they love Informatica. Um, you know, the MPS scores are off the chart. The employees passionate about what they do. And you look at the macro dynamics of more and more data, more and more data needs to be integrated, cleansed, secured, and so on, that's great. It's also a company that has the business maturity and the business processes of a company that's about $200 million. And they have dollars. talent management, team's pretty solid. I mean, team's very, the, you know. The, the biggest challenge was to go to market. Uh, and, and silos, redundancies, lots of room for business efficiencies, just like Adobe. 
I'm going, this is great. I could just take my playbook of what I learned at Adobe and help this company get to become a two billion, three billion, four billion company. So are they company. executing that playbook? Yeah, so we, 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 if you look at what we've been able to do, um, taking a shining star, uh, Neil, uh, and who's the product guy, making him the CEO. Taking what looked like a really good product guy in, in Amit, uh, Walia, and making him head of products. Um, bringing in a CFO that knows how to deal with efficient business processes and work with private sponsors, uh, a, guy, a guy like uh, Doug Barnett. Bringing in a senior marketing guy, uh, the senior guy at SAS, at SAS, and making him our CMO, Jim Davis. And now bringing in a senior sales executive, Lou, Lou Alanasio from IBM, we have the team to take this to the next level. That's awesome, and I got to ask you about the, just you mentioned a comment about Adobe, I love the reference. The activist market that's in now, how many Adobes are being killed today? Because your, your point, Adobe was not a dead company, they had innovation, money in the bank, and obviously it's a brand, it was phenomenal. Is Yahoo that? Similar thing, I mean, it's, Yahoo had a great brand. I mean, they're getting destroyed by activists. Being, being a public company today is much more painful than when I was CEO. I was CEO 2000 and 2007. And I think back to that, that time, yeah, the quarterly earnings were important, but I had a board that encouraged me to continue to pay attention to the long term. You can't do that now. Yeah. Unless you're somebody like Oracle, where you have a founder who owns 27% of the stock, you could think about the long term. Yeah, and he's or in the case of Facebook, too. where you control the stock, or Google, where you have voting power over the stock. But if you're a typical yeah. tech public you're company today, you're at risk. And if you don't want to be at risk, you have to manage to the short term. Informatica has the pleasure of yeah. doing things for the long term. So we're able to give the customer what yeah. they want. So you know, we talk about on-premise cloud. We don't have to worry about. It. We could deliver to the customer. You, you don't want have to buy that, subscription. We interviewed Michael Dell. He used the term "90-day shot clock," and it's like that is just. He's like, I was. It sucked. Yeah. Basically, is what he said. He didn't say that on live on, on, on the cube, but he's like, it, you know, it was miserable. And he Michael's wants, Michael's a smart guy. Michael hasn't changed. <laughs> he, he knows what he needs to do to run a successful company. He just couldn't do it as a public company. Okay, so I got to ask you, one of the questions I had written down I wanted to ask you was, uh, what's changed with data? I mean, you've seen, you know, the old school IT world grow from, you know, obviously client server, PC revolution, all the way through the internet now here. Real time's obviously on front and center. But what's changed from your perspective? There's a, a lot of it. <laughs> what is the <laughs> highlight? The Give us volume, the highlights. The volume of data that is being generated is just mind boggling to me. I, I, I think back, to when I was running Adobe and trying to make decisions, I would struggle to get the data that I needed to feel confident in my decision making. And many times I just had to rely on my intuition, which, yeah, it was. Like, give me an example, like, uh, like um, sales data? Pricing, pricing. Okay, you know, Photoshop is selling for $4.99. Uh, I really think we could raise the price. Uh, what should we raise Fingers the price crossed. to? I'm thinking, okay, I'm a consumer. I've made, this is a considered purchase. I'm going to buy a TV. If I'm going to buy a flat screen TV for $9.99 or for $8.99, if it was $9.49, would I not buy it? No, because I made a decision to buy Samsung TV XYZ model. So I had to use my own intuition. My, my competitor is pricing it. Maybe they figured this out and I'll just follow I didn't them. have any competition. I That's didn't true. have any competition at the time. It, it was more about what is, how far can I go without really alienating my customer? That's true, yeah. And yeah, I could go to 7.99, so I'm, I, I'm trying to rely on my own intuition versus looking at real data where I could do some market tests and say, okay, yeah. why don't I price it here at this price and see, the, you know, see what the customer reaction is. I didn't have the time to, I, I didn't have the, 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 the tools, I didn't have the infrastructure to give me the answers I needed. Whereas today, there's so much data because of what's coming in through the social networks, what's coming in through uh, traditional data, you know, through, through your ERP system, what's coming in through uh, real-time uh, activity, what's being generated in the cloud. I could use all that data yeah. to make a truly informed decision. So volume 
is a big deal. So just saying, looking at your career, you've had all these kind of like pioneering roles. You mentioned Aldous PageMaker, that was desktop published, and that was part of that wave of, of innovation. Elemental, obviously, video with Amazon. And you mentioned Adobe, they were on the front end. Now you got uh, Informatica, which looks a lot like Adobe, but now it's private. So I got to ask you, data is big, a lot of volume, but now there's new roles emerging, this new CDOs, and, and so we're constantly hearing data is now a board level conversation. So, what the hell does that mean? Yeah, like, do it, they say, hey, we should get more data? Or, or, or what is the, well, one, is it a board level yeah. conversation? And what kind of conversations yes. you see? And the CDO role, how does it all? Yeah, so there's, um, from a board perspective, and I sit on not only Oracle, other public boards, Synopsys, uh, private boards, ChargePoint, which is the EV, electrical vehicle charging station uh, company, amongst others. And one side of data from a board perspective is corporate governance. So, especially for the public companies, as a board, we need to have the confidence that the information that the company has is secure, that uh, we're, we're dealing with privacy issues, whether it's employee issues or customer mm -hmm. data, we want to make sure that's being used appropriately in the right places, right countries. We want to make sure we have the right data to deal with any kind of foreign corruption uh, issues uh, because we're liable to the uh, regulators like the Department of Justice. So the, the huge corporate governance issue around data. And then as a board, more so today than ever before, the board is responsible for validating and questioning the strategy of a company. Well, if it's the opinion of management team that we should go off and do something, that's one thing. When that opinion is backed up by data, that gives the board much more comfort that what they're suggesting and what they're recommending. More harmonious relationship the, between management and board members. That's correct. So the company, therefore, the management team is required, both from a corporate governance perspective and from a um, strategy perspective, to generate the right data to support what they're doing. How they do it within the organization is going to vary enterprise by enterprise. In some cases, they'll have a chief data officer. In some cases, that person will report to the CIO. In but some cases- Would you say early for a CDO? It's kind of an early it's trend? Early, it's an early trend. I think about the CSO, which has become more and more common. The CDO will become more and more common as the CIO, the CFO, the CEO begin to realize that data is really critical. And it's a hard job. Being able to hom homogenize, rationalize all the data that's coming in is hard. Plus the user of the data has changed. I, I started my career at Microsoft. So I was at Microsoft in the mid 80s, uh, pre-IPO, post-IPO. And I think about Lotus 1, 2, 3, Microsoft Job's Excel. Job's not done until Lotus doesn't run. Were you on that team? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, I was on the helping to launch Excel. Okay. <laughs> and, and, but I remember when I first started, the guys who were using, and there was guys that were using Lotus 1, 2, 3 were the financial analysts within the finance department. People didn't do a lot of spreadsheet work outside of that. Now, every business user uses Excel. The same is going to happen with, uh, 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 with all these business analytics tools like Tableau and Click and, and Power BI, which means making sure that the company's data is rationalized, is collected in the right way, is cleansed, is secure, is more important than ever before, which is going to put pressure to have somebody in charge of doing that, regardless of title. So you mentioned uh, the team that has been recruited in Informatica, and you're right, great pedigree, and obviously pulling together very nicely. What role will data have on leadership generally? And as you look forward, what are you going to look for in a leader as as it pertains to data. Yeah. Um, I'll say this. Uh, at the end of the day, every decision that a leader has to make will never be based 100% on data. If it was that easy, we wouldn't need leaders. We wouldn't need leaders. Everybody could just look at the data and move on. So there was always a 
piece of experience, intuition, charisma, uh, charisma observation, prediction skills that is unique to an individual leader. However, because data is so available, that leader has to be able to use and leverage that data like never before. So, whereas when I was running a company, the fact that I wasn't that good at analyzing data, who cares? Today, I want a leader who's going to recognize the value of data and incorporate that into that decision make, making. It's data first, then I'll apply business judgment to it. So what skills are mid- Analytical. So analytic skills, understanding data, so in many respects, you are starting to draw an association between the adoption of data-oriented empirical management skills within a business that Informatic, Informatic is trying to provide the tooling That's for to career paths. So one of the best things that someone could do today is implement a lot of these toolings, figure out how to apply it, uh, and then run the business accordingly because it not only helps the business, but it helps people move in the organization. A a absolutely. One of the ahas for me during the conference this week was when we first bought the company, I was thinking, okay, it's really interesting. The need for data management is greater than ever before because of just the volume, everything we just talked about, the volume of data, the diversity of data, the need to secure it, and so on. The aha for me was, wow, data management is critical for business success and for career success. That was the aha for me. It's like, wow, all of a sudden, we're driving, this sector is driving success of business versus strictly being an enabler. It's no longer just a tool, it's necessary. Uh, for the future. In many respects, I would presume that one of the chief jobs of the CDO, and whether it's a permanent or a transitory job, in many respects, we'll see how that plays out, but the CDO has to be in a position to communicate to the business that clear relationship between using data, but more importantly, culturally, you won't succeed here unless you're part of the team that's using data. The same way that the finance organization said, you know, I could do the Excel spreadsheet or the Lotus one, two, three spreadsheet for you and the macros, or here, why don't I give you a tool that you could use and then you could learn and you could do your own analysis and empower yourself to make the right decisions. Absolutely. It's the same exact thing. So as you think about the role that products are going to play from Informatica and the development of an ecosystem, uh, which we perhaps might better characterize as kind of a business graph of expertise and, and capabilities and customers and needs. What role does that play at the board level of Informatic in thinking about where this company's going? Because this is such a, you know, the volume is enormous. No offense to Informatica, there's no way they're going to be able to do yeah, this we, on their own. We, we, by no means, can we do that on our own? And what we don't want to do is lose our focus. And again, I'll draw the analogy to Adobe. When I was at Adobe, they, um, there was a lot of people in the company who said, hey, we should get into the productivity software business, we should compete against Microsoft with word processing and maybe spreadsheets. Go away, time out. I know what we do good. We make stuff look pretty. We, help, we give people tools to make stuff look pretty imaging, illustration. And the buyers are people who like to and make stuff And the buyers who make stuff pretty. pretty. So why don't we keep doing that? Informatica is really good at data management and it's getting more and more complex. It does mean we need to work with the likes of the uh, uh, Tableaus and Click and Microsoft with you know, Power BI on the uh, visualization of that data and make sure it was seamlessly integrated. It means we need to work with the cloud providers like Azure and AWS and Google and Oracle and, and, and others um, to make sure that we are comfortably sitting on top of their stack. Um, we need to make sure we work with the system integrators who are providing the vertical solutions because we can only take a solution so far. We can't 
address the unique needs of an insurance company that's doing property insurance and they want to really understand 360 of the customer. We could provide them a 360 platform in MDM, we can't do the verticalization. So do, working really closely with system integrators is critical. Um, and open source? And op yeah, absolutely, so guys like Hortonworks, Cloudera, we need to make sure that we're taking advantage of what they're doing, and in the case of Hortonworks, you know, the, the, the tons the ecosystem, of data. basically. Excuse you gotta, me? You got to fuel the ecosystem. We have to fuel the ecosystem, we have to be a great partner and do what we do extremely well. well Microsoft Working with was, the SaaS guys. Microsoft playbook is perfect here. You got to make sure they make money. Right. And, right. They, and they they're on the right side of the of the line. Yeah, and, and having know. having uh, Hortonworks come and, and be on stage with us this week was a, a big you know indication of that. Some of the, having Microsoft and Salesforce invest in Informatica alongside Primera that's and Canadian that's a big deal. So everybody kind of gets yeah. it. Um, we just need to encourage it to happen, and we have a team in place that will be able to make that. Well, happen. congratulations! It's a great move. Um, love love the, the strategy of going private and really bringing some value. And, and, and watch us yeah. uh, when we go public again. We will, <laughs> we, we'll be covering you guys, we'll certainly be doing live video, and certainly the reporting on it as well. Um, I'll give you the final word of the segment. Share with the audience, people who are watching that might be sitting back, um, CXO, senior leaders of companies, who hear you and say, hmm, this guy's got some great advice, he's seen a lot of stuff, he's involved in a lot of, a lot of big companies, they're trying to figure out what to do. And um, they all know they got to go to the clouds. It's not pretty obvious what has to happen. What should they do? What's the mindset? Give them a quick advice uh, on those senior executives that are watching. You know, I, I've had the benefit of working for Bill Gates, working with Steve Jobs for better and worse, uh, and then trying to oversee Larry Ellison. And if I look at the three things or if I look at the, those three individuals who were quite successful, and I think about the common theme between all three, they, would, they are or were driven and surrounded themselves with really smart people. Uh, and they stayed focused and hands-on uh, in their business. And regardless of um, what, what, what position you have as an executive, you want to be hands-on, you want to be driven, you want to be in the details when you have to, and you want to have really smart people. Bruce, thanks so much. We could do a whole segment on those three people with you. Another time, we'll come to your office and, and do a sit down. Love to get that, this great, would be a great one hour interview. Uh, Bruce, thanks for sharing the insight here at Informatica World, really appreciate it. My pleasure. Great perspective, great story here. Inside the Cube, we're live at Informatica World. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris, Silicon Angle Media's The Cube. We'll be right back with more. You're watching The Cube. It's always fun to come back to theCUBE.